the uh, is this recording? The only thing that makes number six interesting is that this is an improper integral. I mean, this antiderivative is very easily taken using u substitution. 1 over x minus 2 dx is 1 over u du. And that's this. However, we have a vertical asymptote at 2. So we have to rewrite this as a limit. And then we already did the work. The next thing we need to do is take this antiderivative, which we did the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 evaluated from k to 5. So the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of k minus Two. As k approaches two, I said k minus two. Now I'll write it. As k approaches two, this approaches zero, and the natural log approaches negative infinity. So the natural log of three plus infinity. That's not a number. This integral diverges, or this integral diverges, I should say. Seven, another improper integral. Once again, we replace a limit of integration with um, a, a limit to limit, the limit as this goes to infinity. If you have trouble with this antiderivative, you can use u substitution, but it's negative one third e to the negative three x. And we're evaluating from zero to k. Let's rewrite to this negative power. So we've got this and then a negative minus negative one th over three e to the three times zero e to the three times zero is one, multiplying by one doesn't do anything. Uh, sorry, I am trying to get this done quickly so that it can be posted quickly, but it's resulting in a lot of little typos. Um, of course, this negative power when it's rewritten becomes positive. As k goes to infinity, the denominator goes to infinity. This goes to zero. 
So one third. Eight, either you remember the trapezoidal rule or you don't really. We're going from one to three. We want n to be four. So the size of an interval is one half. So if we rewrite two as two halves and three as six halves, we've got three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves. Here's the trapezoidal rule, delta x over two, because delta x is one half, becomes one fourth. And then it's just f of one is e to the one squared. f of three halves is e to the three halves squared and so on. And you have to plug this into a calculator. It's a little tedious. I ended up with this. Number nine, do you have the arc length formula at the tip of your fingers? If you do, this is very much just plug and play. You are not asked to evaluate the integral in number nine. Number 10, the radius that appears in the volume formula is the distance between the curve and the axis axis of rotation. Well, the distance between y equals zero and y equals x squared is x squared. So we set up the integral of pi. Let's see. Um, this is x equals zero. So the integral from zero to this is x equals two pi, the radius squared. So this is x to the fourth. The antiderivative is one fifth x to the fifth, let's see, two, four, eight, 16, 32 fifths pi. When you plug two in here, you get 32 fifths. When you plug zero in, you get to zero. So you subtract those, you get 32 fifths, and then you have that pie.